Welcome back to 3D Jake and this is going to be a very special video because we have the Elegoo Neptune 3 Max here and this is easily the biggest printer I've ever worked with. Want to know all its secrets? Stay tuned. Okay, let's get basic specs out of the way. This printer has a direct drive extruder, a 420x420x500 build volume, a PEI plate, a touchscreen, a filament sensor, and yes, the piece de resistance, a tool drawer. Now you may have noticed that this printer is crazy huge. In fact, so huge, it's difficult to fit in the workshop. Right now it is straddling dangerously on the worktop here, and I'm a bit nervous about it. While the printer's frame dimensions are 658x632x740, by by because it is a bed slinger, you actually need much more space on the y-axis. So the actual space required for this printer from front to back is almost 900 millimeters. I had issues with the size because it's so big, it can't really fit on one worktop when it's facing like this. It has to be kind of parallel to it. Uh, but I, I really love it, uh, but it sticks out like a sore thumb in the workshop. Setup was ridiculously easy, and I was expecting this to take 30 minutes more perhaps with such a huge printer, but it took 10, maybe 15 minutes tops to do everything. And it was really well packaged. It actually came with these 3D printed clamps that hold it in place during transit, which was awesome. All I had to do after assembly was to adjust the eccentric nuts under the bed and for the hot end as well, and we were good to go. Let's go into more detail about the spec. So first of all, it has a direct drive. Thank you, Elegoo, thank you. So many Max printers just have Bowden. So Elegoo, thank you so much for putting this on your huge printer. Awesome. We got a standard A PTFE hot end, so up to 240, about, don't go higher than 240 maybe. Um, so this will print PLA, PTG, TPU, of course, direct right, thank you. Um, but don't expect to print nylon or something like that on this. But if you do upgrade it and you print nylon, then let us know, because that would be cool. We have dual part cooling fans, which is great, uh, as I think they expected customers to print with big layers where the heat in the extruded filament can take some time to be lost to the environment. And despite the two fans, it's relatively quiet. It's pretty similar to other printers with just one fan, actually. The touchscreen is really nice. And coming from reviewing the Anycubic Cobra 2 before, check the video here, it is very refreshing. Refreshing because the touchscreen menu on the Cobra 2, unfortunately, like a lot of touchscreens, are very minimalist, very Spartan. But this has everything. It is nicely oriented. You can change things like acceleration or offset. And it is magnetically held in place. So you can take it off and put it back if you want. The bed, huge, of course, but it's PEI and this is wonderful. Actually, when you do print something that is big and like at least half the size of the build area, it's actually quite difficult to remove the PEI plate. And you really need to put in some force there, but that's good adhesion then. So that's a good thing. So yeah, nice. While the heating time on the hot end is pretty standard, you would likely expect to see pretty slow heating on the 420 by 420 bed. And while this is not as fast as a smaller printer, it is actually surprisingly swift. Underneath the bed, we have six leveling wheels. Now, yeah, most have four, but this has six because I guess it's so big. But the fact that it does have leveling wheels means that we can do a manual auxiliary leveling, which brings us to auto bed leveling. The APL sensor is actually incredibly well hidden underneath the hot end shroud here. Um, I've had zero problems with the bed leveling and with a lot of big printers, you can expect to have some variance in the distance between the nozzle and the bed on the perimeters of the bed. But we have been printing very, very large things, things that take up at least half the build area of the printer, and we've had no adhesion problems at all. Moving upwards to the wiggly little filament sensor here, and this works well, but these kinds of detectors have a little bit of drag and resistance when the spool is in a non-traditional orientation, shall we say. And I'll get back to this later because it, it is important. We have nice bell tensioners here on the X and the Y axis. Now this is pretty standard these days, but it is always nice to see. I was a bit unsure about using a, a larger nozzle size with this. It is a standard PTFE hot end. There's nothing crazy about this. So I was a bit unsure about how much flow it could handle. For some of the prints, we printed with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle with a 0.3 millimeter layer height with a standard brass nozzle, 210 degrees with PLA, and we were printing external perimeters at around 36 millimeters per second, which works out at about 8.42 millimeters cubed per second. And that was totally fine. That worked out fine. 
The extrusion is clean and smooth, but that speed was for our outer parameters. Everything else was 60 millimeters per second, which would come to a volumetric flow of around 14 millimeters cubed per second. Now, that flow was used mostly for our infill, and it might be a bit difficult to see here, but we couldn't notice any major defects. Still, I don't think you could push it more than that. To compare this hot end between two others, I would say it's somewhere falling between a standard Creality hot end and a V6. If you are interested in bumping up this flow rate, then the hot end uses a Mark 8 nozzle. So what you could do is get a CHT Mark 8 nozzle, and that will increase the flow rate considerably. But this printer is not a speedster. It's not a Voron printer. It is not a Bamboo Lab printer. It is for printing big cosplay, for printing wall art, huge things. If that is what you're into, then this printer is perfect for you. Forget foam, PLA is your new favorite material. And what is really interesting about this printer is its cost. So it is 499 euro right now. And comparing this to like its other competitors, so for instance, the Creality CR10 Max, the Anycubic Cobra Max, uh, the Creality CR6 Max, uh, this is considerably better. First of all, it's larger, but it also has a direct drive and it also has a PEI plate. So right now, this printer is kind of the king of big printers. If you are getting this printer, I would highly, highly recommend you to download Prusa Slicer and the profile for this printer as well, because it is awesome. And the organic supports make it really, really useful because supports can take up a lot of material, especially for a large print. With those organic supports, it's considerably reduced. Though I would recommend you to use pretty strong supports because you might need them. So this was printed with Prusa Slicer, uh, the Alpha 6, I believe, and it came out wonderfully. This was a 0.8 millimeter nozzle with 0.3 millimeter layer height. Uh, wonderfully, except this bit right here. And this is my fault because of the supports that, uh, that I chose, the support settings, but ho hopefully next time I'll get this right. Uh, we also printed this guy. This is a little, uh, little I should say, large skull. Very cool in our dark blue eco PLA. And this one actually took longer to print than this, even though this is almost twice the size. This is because I was using the 0.4 millimeter nozzle on this one and the 0.8 millimeter nozzle on this. This took about a day and a half. This took to almost three days to print. So yeah, getting a new nozzle makes a difference with this printer. But I do have two problems with this printer. Of course I do. If I ever describe a printer to you that has zero problems and it's perfect, then you know that I've lost my mind. One problem is the spool holder. And now this is a big printer, so you're gonna be printing big, which means you use a big nozzle, and that means a lot of flow. Uh, but 0.4 millimeters is the standard for pretty much every printer, so I'll give that to you. But if you print big, a big spool would be nice to use. And this guy does not fit our 2.3 kilo spools, which I find very disappointing. Now, maybe it fits other large spools, in which case that's great. But I tried this with our own big spool holder that we have in the shop and the angle at which it printed was far from optimal. Everyone knows I don't like end stop filament sensors, so this will come as no surprise, uh, but I'm gonna say it anyway. If your spool is not aligned perfectly with the filament sensor, with an end stop filament sensor, it will cause issues with extrusion, such as like this. This will happen terribly inconsistent extrusion caused by the drag because the spool is not placed directly above the filament sensor. That is the only beef I have with this printer. Everything else is beautiful, actually. And I'm gonna print so much cosplay stuff, you have no idea. Now, as you may have guessed, I am very excited about this printer. So I really wanna do some follow-up videos on this because I wanna hook it up to a multi-material unit and do some cosplay and wall art and stuff. So that should be really interesting. And I have noticed that the main board is an STM32 F104 processor. So technically that should also work with the Creality Sonic Pad. And I'm interested to see how well that will work, especially with input shaping on a printer with a bed that is so huge. That is a bed slinger. So stay tuned. If you're interested in this printer, then let us know. If you have any questions, write us a comment, write us an email. We're always happy to help you. And if you have this printer, then also give us and everyone else your opinion. We would love to hear it. To keep in the loop, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Later.